Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 9th of January, 2023. Thanks for being here. Topics on the agenda, I had news, action items, elections, build monitor view plugin, governance board meeting time and date, lost donations from ffis.de, uh, CDF outreach, and if Oleg joins us, CDF topics, and then community activity. Any other topics that need to go on the agenda today? Okay, great. Then let's let's go ahead with news. Wednesday, we will release Jenkins 2.375.2, the next LTS in the 2.375 line. Thanks very much to everyone involved. Chris Stern is release lead. Uh, thanks, Kevin, for writing the change log and the upgrade guide. The December 2022 newsletter is being prepared. Thanks to Bruno Verachten for submitting the pull request, to Alyssa Tong for gathering it and to the contributors. There are a number of things that I still have to contribute, so we're not ready to merge yet, but thank you very much for the progress. We had a Jenkins webinar on Google Summer of Code last month, and upcoming, we've got FOSDEM in Brussels, February 4th and 5th. Alyssa's coordinating the Jenkins booth. In terms of any questions or comments on the news items, Okay, action items. Alex had the action item to, to help us require that community SIG office and other um, lists have a member of the board as a manager or owner so that in case of issues, we can get involved and actually make a difference. Anything you want to report there, Alex? Oh, not hearing you, Alex. Better? Yes, better. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, last week I had a chat with Kosuke and he handed over ownership of the Brazilian, the Korean and the Japanese mailing list to me, which I, yeah, yeah, those three, one, the Brazilian one, the Korean one and the Japanese one. Both three mailing language lists last used a few years ago which I have archived in, in favor of community.jenkins.io. The lists are still public accessible, but no, but um, members can no longer post there. Great, thank you. Thanks very much. So was the archiving process difficult? Is it something that, I know it's something that Kevin and I need to do with the documentation list. Yeah, it's pretty simple and straightforward. If you go to the settings tab of the Google group, you can simply configure who can post. That can be a mailing list member, a manager, or owner. If you simply change it to manager or owner, the list is already read-only. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Any questions from others on that progress? I did, also I did also mail Oleg and Olivier Vernon, but I didn't hear back from them yet. And those are for other lists, for, for other lists? Yeah. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, I have the action item to create and distribute election badges, no progress, my apologies. I've got to go do the research to find out what that means and do the research, uh, send them out before the next meeting. Uh, Kevin had the action item to use the community for the Jenkins docs mailing list. And as far as I understand, Kevin, no progress there. This is a, again, a Mark Waite thing. That's correct. Okay. okay. Easy CLA documentation by Oleg, no progress as far as I've seen. 
uh, but no requests in the ensuing month either. Okay, create an empty agenda item. This is working well. We'll keep doing it. Uh, thanks to everyone who contributed to this agenda. It was really nice that I'm not the only one typing agenda proposals. Thank you very, very much. Next topic was combine the sub projects and SIGs into a single concept working groups. That's no progress, but uh, mark to complete by end of before next meeting. I also will submit um, roadmap updates. The roadmap updates need to be approved by board members. And so it's a good thing for me to do that as a series of small pull requests. The roadmap as currently listed is badly out of date and needs to be updated. So expect to see those uh, coming soon. Oleg had the action item to send a proposal to Rick to retire the Jenkins Chinese site. The site is not getting updates and hasn't been receiving updates for multiple years. Uh, no progress as far as I know. Does anyone else have other information? Okay, then archive the governance meeting notes. Gavin has prepared the archive. Uh, we need a... Uh, need a destination repository. And I have the action item to bring that to closure, whether it should be in Jenkins Infra or in the Jenkins CI organization. It's the question was raised back by the Infra team, uh, raised a question about the location of the repository. That's all that I had on action items. Any other action items that may have been missed? Okay, next topics then. We had uh, discussed in our last meeting this open proposal to allow up to two elected board members from a single company and said we would bring it to this meeting to try to bring it to final closure. Now, Uli, I know one of your concerns was that you were minus one uh, as you want to further explain your concerns here so that others hear them and then then we can have further discussion i think there's no much discussion required so i just before i work i gave my minus one um i wasn't sure what your you know what was the reasoning for the whole thing because it was started before i entered the board and yeah since nobody actually replied to this requirement, this new requirement. So yeah, I think I'm not minus one, I, but I'm not plus one. So I'm, yeah, actually, I don't know why we are doing it really, because yeah, I don't see the need to change anything now, but I'm not against it. So if you want to change it, you know, feel free to go. Uh, I'm sorry, if you open the next message, I did reply to the question about yeah, yes, what the you, reason is. Sorry, uh, nobody else. So my 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 thinking about it was uh, we need to have a discussion of all Jenkins developers about this topic. And since nobody besides Basil <laughs> replied, we have no much developers left in Jenkins uh, who are you're really interested in this in this topic so um yeah <laughs> so i won't block it just because <laughs> uh, i said it once before so my reasoning was i want to block it for now because i just went to the board and then i need to decide if i should change the rules so because the rules we are changing makes sense to be yeah will be i think in the december next december or next november the next election is so yeah it's quite some time to go and the reasoning of or why i'm wondering is i think yeah it's it's not really important so um let's make the decision and yeah i'm fine with it 
So I'm not plus one, but I will not block it. Okay, are there so, others? Go ahead, Uli. So actually nobody could uh, say until now why we need someone else in the board. So we have currently four persons in the board and yeah, that's, I think it's fine enough. And yeah, we see how it will behave when the next elections came in one year. Well, so, but isn't it that if we don't, if we don't allow this rules change, we are assured that in the next election, we can at most have one person from CloudBees. And yeah. this, this reasoning that, that Basel gives and that I agree with, a second person from CloudBees gives us a chance to do more, get more work done on governance action items. Yeah. And this reasoning, I don't understand, but because we don't have so much action items in the governance board. Um, so the, the last few meetings, I was part of this meeting, we have just a couple of action items. So I'm not sure which action items you mean, which we don't work on. Well, so looking at, I'm the biggest, most guilty party here is, is the challenge. So so things that, that I've struggled to complete include um, pull requests, right? Uh, Oleg's completion of the Chinese website, Oleg's completion of Easy CLA. I mean, I think we've got a number of things that have lasted for a very long time as, okay. as open action items on the, on the board's list of, of action items. Okay. Yeah, I think, Mark, you've done a heroic job with completing as many action items as you have, but even still, there's there's more that remain. Well, uh, so part of my part of my rationale for the the another part, and it was a part that was not immediately obvious to me until later thought, was that the current rules actually disadvantage two companies over any other company in the world. And that was one I was trying to describe later here of if Red Hat came and became actively involved, they could have two board members elected without any question, without any rules, question, et cetera. Likewise, Google or JFrog or Microsoft, any one of them, there are exactly two companies that are not allowed to have two board members. And that's because of the the affiliation term we use with for Kosuke being affiliated with CloudBees and Launchable. Yeah, but that does not, but that does not imply that we should change the rules in your way. I think we could change the rules that no company at all is allowed to have two seats in our four election seats. So, I think one solution to your problem you are stating is that. We change it in the way you proposed, but another proposal would be to say, okay, no company is allowed to have two seats, no company, even CloudBees and no Google, no Red Hat. Currently, we, we have this problem in the definition because Koske is a part of CloudBees or of his own company. But if we change the rule in another way, that means that we do not allow from these four members which are elected regularly we can have a new rule saying that no company is allowed to have two seats of these four members then this problem will disappear as well but then it really worsens the problem of getting the work done yeah, this, last... these are two different things. I want to, don't want to mix these arguments. One argument is not the two company or one company can have two seats. This is one argument. And the other argument is let's have our work done. I don't think that it makes sense to mix these arguments. Well, but I think we want to optimize results for the project. So I think we do need to mix those arguments, don't we? I don't think so. 
as if we want to have, get more work done, we can have more seats in the uh, in the, our group. So that's far easier. <laughs> and and yet we did not have we did not have any contested seats in the last in the last election. So adding more seats risks adding vacant seats. Why? I, I'm I'm concerned that that. Why would that when we have one seat and more then basil can came in not if not if because then we have not the majority so my problem is that we don't have the majority from one company but uh, really let's go ahead i i don't really want to discuss this thing anymore from my perspective. So for me, it's fine. Just okay. go ahead. Oh, okay. So Uli, I think what you're saying, then just to be very clear, I think what you're saying, you're okay if I call for a call for a vote in terms of, of the proposed change. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to, are there others who have concerns or, or items they want to vo voice? Okay, then I'd like to call for a vote. All right, and as usual, we allow all who are participating to vote, and I try to doc. I will document those votes. So, uh, I'm going to say Mark Mark W is Mark Wade is plus one. Uh, Uli, you had said you were uh, zero. Yes, zero is okay. Uh, Alex, I'm going to go to you next as the other member of the board. Your vote. I'm plus one. Okay. Uh, Basel, you're next on my visible list. Uh, plus one for me. Okay. Next, Kevin Martins, I see you visible on my list. Uh, plus one for me as well. Okay. And Bruno? Plus one for me as well. Okay. All right. Okay, so based on that, my interpretation is we carry this forward with a yes, uh, accept the change. Any objections to that? Okay, great. Then let's go on to the next topic. Thank you. Thanks everyone for the discussions. Uli, thank you very much for voicing your concerns. Uh, next topic then, build monitor view plugin. Basil, do you want to give us a, an overview here? Sure. Um, the build monitor view plugin uh, is non-standard in its hosting and release process. And this has caused a number of pain points over the years. For example, when I was working on the Guava project, um, I had to get a new release of this plugin out. And it was it was difficult to do that, um, given its non-standard release process. Um, so to summarize the current state, it's it's currently hosted in the um, Jan Mullock GitHub organization and uses GitHub Actions for CI and uses a custom CD, uh, which creates releases on every commit with, without any release notes, um, even for dependency updates. Um, so one of the things that we've heard users complaining about is that um, there's no visibility into the content of these releases. Um, so every so often when this topic comes up, um, I've offered to help normalize the release process for this plugin by moving it to our standard model of the Jenkins CI GitHub organization, um, using Jenkins for CI, um, using our, our standard project-wide CD uh, setup, and using Release Drafter um, to document the contents of the release. So I think this would solve the, the pain for users um, because this would avoid creating releases for dependency updates, uh, which our process does not do uh, unless the developer label is applied. 
um, and also it would give us release notes with release drafter. And in general, it would make it much easier to do releases of this plugin. For example, if there's a future UI change that requires that plugin to be adapted, it would be much easier to release that change if this plugin was using our standard process. So uh, I had a discussion with the author of this plugin and uh, he noted that there were some conditions that he wanted our assurances about in order to transfer the repository to our GitHub organization. And one of them was retaining a note about the original author in the README, uh, which I thought should be non-controversial. That seems something that we could easily accommodate. Um, the other request was to retain the current non-invasive footer linking to his website. So this is um, on the bottom right corner of uh, the user interface. Um, there is this link uh, to the author's website um, inside of the Jenkins UI. So you could you could call it branding, for example. Um, but uh, so that's so this is already there in the current code that's hosted in his GitHub organization. Um, but we are currently publishing this on our update center um, and have been for a very long time. So this wouldn't be a new addition, but rather um, rather this would be assuring the author that this existing link could be retained even as we move the hosting of the repository into our own GitHub organization. So that was a topic that I, I didn't feel that I could give him an answer one way or another uh, as an individual, um, which is why I wanted to bring this topic to the board. Um, but if the board does confirm that these conditions are acceptable, then I can proceed with normalizing the hosting and release of this plugin. Comments from others, any concerns there? Yeah, I definitely agree with Basil. I think, I mean, the Jenkins CI organization is definitely an umbrella organization for plugins hosted. And I strongly believe that plugins available on the update center should preferably host it on the Jenkins CI um, organization. So yeah, I think we should move on and get the repository transferred or fork to our organization. So, and uh, Alex, I think specifically the question would be, are you okay with the conditions that the that the author or the, yeah, the original author has asked for? For me, I'm quite comfortable with those. I feel like those are quite fair. I have no objections. Are you okay with them? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Do we have a screenshot of this, how this footer looks like? Uh, I I don't yeah, okay, and I might I don't mean the code the how it looks in Jenkins. Right, right. You wanted the visual, and I I don't have it. I don't have one, but I can certainly embed one. I would expect this is not very, in, as said, not very, not terribly invasive, because it's just sitting inside the footer. I have one somewhere. I can pull it up before the end of this meeting. And how many people are using this plugin? Oh, that's a good thing to check. We have that answer. Installed in 16,000 of 300,000 installations. So, Enough. And <laughs> so something, what is that, less than 5%? Oh, yeah, but yeah. it's still enough that we can't yeah, release a core change that breaks this plugin. So if you, if you look sure. at the releases tab of this, you'll see the problem that users have been complaining about, which is that none of this information is really um, val is, is relevant. I mean, it's all, there's no, there's no information about the content of these releases. It's, it's actually not even picking up um, on this page, the newer builds um, from oh, 2022. Um, and, and all of this is all this is due to the non-standard scheme that is being used, which is not, it's not a bad scheme. It's just that it, it's not the same as the scheme we use elsewhere. So all of our tooling doesn't pick it up. Good.
So Uli, are you, do you I found, have- I found the screenshot. I can share it in a, a oh, minute good. or two. Here, oh, you you say you need a little bit of time to get ready to share? Yeah, let me just upload it somewhere. Okay, great. So uh, I think it makes sense to uh, move it to Jenkins CI. <clears throat> and if someone does not like the <laughs> advertisement i think we can or the person who does not like it can fork the repository and create another one so that's fine good okay all right i'm i'm as well comfortable with it anyone else have objections or concerns Okay. No, I think it's I think it's a, a a good idea just to normalize um, and improve consistency. So um, there was one other requirement that John had about making sure that his test suite was still enabled. So I'm still discussing that, um, but um, there's some problems with the test suite as well that um, that that were uh, that basically the test suite is not currently working. So we have to figure out what to do about that. Um, but I'm I'm confident that I can come to a conclusion with John about the test suite, um, as long as these other conditions are accepted. Great, thank you. Thanks very much. So the suite is currently broken. Yeah, the tests are not currently passing. So the question I think is, do we want to go ahead with moving it to the Jenkins CI GitHub organization without running the tests, i.e. turning them off, which I think I think John didn't want us to turn off the tests, but my perspective was more that um I don't think we could I don't think I would be making the situation worse by doing that, um, since they're already mm. broken. So right. We've got to figure out if uh, if somebody can get these tests passing again, or how much work that is. Um, they also use a non-standard test harness, so that's another complicating factor. But um, I think we could we could probably come to a conclusion about that um, with some more discussion. Hopefully, we could find a way to just fix these tests. But if we can't, then I'm sure that we could find a way to at least not make it any worse than it is today. Great. Any other discussion before we call for vote here on, on the decision? Yeah, do you still wanna see the screenshot or no? Oh yes, please do want to. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Or I can, if you wanna just, Post the location of your uh, of your your screen share that you uploaded. It's a private link, so it'll be easier if I just share my screen. Great. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen now? Mm. Ah, yes, yes. So this is uh, this is a screenshot of the of the plugins UI. Um, and if you see on the bottom right corner, it just says brought to you by John Molek. Okay, that's fine. Can, can you see that, Uli? Okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. It's just, okay. Right. All right, I'll stop sharing. Yeah, that, at least to me, that, that doesn't look at all. I mean, we've got... I, I'm confident we've got much worse things than that in some other plugins. So that's, mm -hmm. that looks great. Yeah. All right. So call for vote then. Um, Uli. Plus one. So. Uh, Alex. Plus one. Basel. Uh, plus one. Kevin. Plus one. Bruno. 
Fine with me. Plus one. Great. Thank you. All right. And I'm plus one. Thanks very much, everyone. Anything else on the on that topic? Okay, next topic then was the governance board meeting time and date. So thanks everyone for being here. The doodle poll, I had a total of five responses and this time worked. Let me double check. Are all of you okay with this as a working time for your meeting, for our meeting? Yes. Great. Okay, I see heads waving and, and that's, that's oh, go ahead, Uli. I think we need to check this again when we are switching to summertime. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yes. But because for now, it's pretty fun. Right. In fact, that's a good point. We've found in the past that when when governments change clocks, we typically want to adjust our meeting time to fit our 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 personal schedules again. And so we will just plan to negotiate that next time the government's meddle with clocks. Uh, please, please lobby your elected representatives to stop government meddling with <laughs> clocks, but that's a different problem. Yeah, should we add an action item on anybody? No, to do that? no, I, no. I've, okay. I've had that action item for years and made no progress <laughs> okay. on it. All right, next topic was lost donations from FFIS.de. So Uli, I guess this one starts with a uh, Kevin closing out the website topic and you bringing it back could you share with us some of the status etc yeah <clears throat> actually uh the the item which is in this uh, issue is not about the website it's about uh, the lost uh earnings we got from the german uh donations i think we had a couple of thousand dollars which where and this uh, website ffis.de this is a german yeah affiliation or it was a german affiliation now i think the link is almost dead and i think they don't work anymore and <clears throat> we it was in my election period uh, or in my last election period i started to work on this issue because i'm from germany so i tried to reach the contact person and actually they still exist but they don't react so without uh, yeah using a lawyer i think we don't have a chance to see our or get our money back so I'm not sure if it's worth the effort. So I think it's okay to close this issue. And yeah, now we have a good documented approach on where the donations should go. And we should not yeah, make such spin-offs in the future anymore. Thank you. Well, and thanks for your work on that. The I, I was really impressed to see this from two years ago, official documentation, making the request, et cetera. Thanks for doing that. And I I agree that I don't think it's worth our energy to attempt to follow legal recourse because I suspect the money is gone and the person will just, uh, at least if it's consistent with US law, we'll just waste money on a lawyer and still not get any money. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, so Linux Foundation is is our their community bridge system is our way of accepting donations now, and uh, that feels like a much more trustworthy location. And I agree with your phrasing: no spinoffs in the future, no no alternate paths to attempt to to collect donations. Anything else on the lost donations topic? Okay, CDF Outreach Reboot, this is just FYI that the meeting was held and now will be happening, I believe, once a month. They'll meet as an outreach group from CDF to help increase the adoption. Some of the action items that came out of that meeting include included ways to help the Jenkins project as we're broadening and deepening involvement in Google Summer of Code, uh, how to encourage more mentors, etc. I'm going to delete the CDF topic since Oleg's not here today. 
The last topic I had was community activity. And this is just my attempt to summarize things that I'm seeing in the online forums and communities. Um, so Google Summer of Code interest is definitely growing. We are certainly needing more, act, more mentors and more project ideas. Thanks to Basel, to Bruno, and to several others for good ideas across a broad range of topics, everything from documentation site to plug-in maintenance to uh, remoting improvements are all included in the set of ideas. Uh, more ideas welcomed and more mentors certainly encouraged. We've also had questions and discussions on Gitter chat and on community.jenkins.io in some specific areas, commonly configuration as code. Kubernetes and pipelines and pipeline shared libraries are recurring themes. So as we go forward, being aware of those, we may find ways to better document them, better describe them, or address the questions in advance. And then the big one, thanks to Bruno for assembling, for Basel for suggesting topics and concepts, and to Kevin for content work. Uh, the December newsletter is intended to cover 12 months of Jenkins progress. So Basel's or Bruno's submitted the pull request. I've got some things that I need to add to it, I'm sure. And uh, as we were going back over the list, it's an amazing thing that's happened in the Jenkins project in 12 months. UI experience improvements, platform changes, major library upgrades, major major changes in all sorts of things and a continued growing install base. So congratulations, thanks to everyone in the Jenkins project. Oh, thank you, Mark too. Any other topics that you wanted to be sure we review today in governance board? Okay, let's call it an end for today. Thanks very, very much.